Japan is a land of the rising sun. At the same time, it is a land of earthquakes, typhoons, volcanoes. People say Japan is probably one of the safest countries to live in the world. That is true in terms of uh, homicides or crimes, but Japan is extremely dangerous country to live in in terms of natural disasters. Do you plan to buy an old house in Japan, in the countryside, in the city? Here are the places that you should avoid. By the way, the points that uh, I'm going to mention in the video, they are only my personal opinion. They are only related to safety issues. So if you're looking into uh, investment value, don't take my words. I'm only focusing on the safety of the houses in Japan. I'm going to show you the five areas that you should avoid through maps. First one, earthquakes. Earthquake happen so frequently in Japan that um, you never know what's gonna come. So the threat of an earthquake is not just the shaking itself, but also about the tsunami that could come after the earthquake. So here is a map that I'm going to show you that shows the exact areas that will have the highest probability of getting damaged uh, by the earthquake or tsunami. So let's take a look at the report and map provided by the Japanese government. Here is a report on the Nankai Trough earthquake by the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism. It shows the map of Japan and the level of intensity of the shaking in different cities during the Nankai earthquake. Level 7 being red and almost the entire Shikoku Island and lower Kansai and Tokai region Will experience at least a lower sixth level of shaking. So wait, aren't there many other active faults along the island of Japan which could cause earthquakes in almost every corner of the country? That is true. On the map here, you can see all the red lines are active faults, and you can see that except Chugok region and Hokkaido, the entire Japan is covered with active faults. The Japan Sea Trench here is what caused the Great Eastern Japan Earthquake and Tsunami in 2011. While no one can predict when the next big earthquake will happen, the probability of the Nankai Trough Earthquake is set to be up to 80% in the next 30 years. And that is why I want to focus solely on the Nankai Trough Earthquake. Back to the report by MLID, the wider green highlighted area aka disaster prevention measures promotion area are regions that are expected to experience at least a lower sixth level of earthquake and the blue color areas aka tsunami evacuation special area are regions that is expected to have at least 30 centimeters of flooding from the tsunami within only 30 minutes of the earthquake the regions include lower part of chiba coast of kanagawa shizuoka mie okayama Shikoku Island and the west coast of Kyushu Island. It would be lovely to have a Pacific Ocean view from your own house, but unless the house is way above sea level, it's probably a good idea to avoid the areas in blue on this map. Second area that you want to avoid, uh, flooding or landslide disasters. If you have lived in Japan in 2018, you would probably remember the big typhoon and flooding that happened in Okayama area plus the earthquake in the Hokkaido that uh, caused a lot of landslide that damaged and uh, destroyed a lot of the houses. The two quickest way for you to check uh, if your property is going to be impacted by the landslide or flooding is to check the hazard map, hazard map. As far as I know, every city has their own hazard map that you can go check right away. Uh, I'm going to show you the example from Kyoto City so you can see how it looks like. First, here is the hazard map that shows the area that are at risk of flooding in the Kita ward of Kyoto City. Here you can see the Golden Pavilion Temple and here is the Kyoto Imperial Palace. The colored areas are all at risk of certain level of flooding and the dotted regions are where wooden houses are in danger of being swept away or damaged by the flooding. While it is certainly nice to be around the Kamogawa River, the entire Kamogawa Delta, where the Shimogamo Shrine is, is quite risky in terms of flooding. Next is the hazard map for landslide disasters. 
and in the Kita ward of Kyoto city. Houses in the red area have the highest risk and the yellow area houses should also be cautious. Even if you're not buying a house, it is a good idea to check your city's hazard map just to find out if your house is at risk and also it's good to learn whether evacuation areas are in your neighborhood. The third area they should avoid are the areas around the active volcanoes. There are currently 111 active volcanoes, 50 of them monitored by the government of Japan, uh, meaning that these are the volcanoes that are more dangerous than the others that they could erupt anytime. There are actually areas that are quite far away from at least the active volcanoes that, uh, and they have less risk of uh, being impacted by the eruptions. So here I'm going to show you a map of all these active volcanoes that are on the island of Japan. Here are the 111 active volcanoes and most of them sit on the red belt which is the Pacific Ring of Fire. It is the reason why earthquakes happen so frequently in Japan. The 50 volcanoes with yellow names are monitored by the Japanese government at all times and that includes the symbolic Fujisan as well. The most recent eruption for Fujisan was back in 1707 and that was over 300 years ago. You can see that there is zero active volcano shown in the Kansai region, the Shikoku Island, and very few in the Chukoku region in the west part of Japan. On this other side here, database on volcanic hazard maps and reference material, you can find the disaster prevention maps of many of the active volcanoes. For example, Mount Ontake here erupted in 2014 and you can see the areas in danger under steam explosion as well as magma eruption. Although there are probably not that many houses or villages around these volcanoes, if you do happen to look for houses around the area, it is probably a good idea to check out the map first. The fourth area, nuclear plants. Yes, they're important. They provide energy, electricity, but I mean, who wants to live close to nuclear plants? There are a total of 54 nuclear plants in Japan at the moment. Although Japan government is planning to close at least 20 or 24, I think, of these nuclear plants in the future, but uh, you don't want to buy a house that are close to one of them. On this map by Nippon.com here, you can see all the nuclear plants in 19 different locations of Japan. The red ones are currently in operation and the ones being crossed out will be terminated in the future. Japanese government suggests that nearby residents to evacuate 20 kilometers away from the nuclear plants when something wrong happens. But it's probably a good idea to not live so close to one to begin with. I won't get into detail on the nuclear plants as they are not exactly a natural disaster but they still pose danger during an earthquake or tsunami. The fifth and the last one that I want to talk about are the areas with shrinking population, the depopulation areas of Japan. This is quite a controversial one because in the end it depends on the person if they want to get away from the city and just live in a more isolated area enjoying like a hermit kind of lifestyle being away from the people just in terms of um, safety issues when in terms of disasters um, being isolated from the community could pose a bigger uh, risk in terms of trying to uh, get away or trying to escape from the area and also i would think that unless the population of japan miraculously increases in the future these are going to be areas that are going to be vanishing or dying in the next 10 20 years these areas are usually in the mountains so there could just simply be risk of having a bear around the world or just bucks on a daily basis centipedes i don't think anyone likes centipedes worse than cockroaches so um Let's take a look. The map here by the government of Japan shows the depopulated municipals 
It is from 4 or 5 years ago, but I think the data is still quite relevant. There are specific conditions to be met for a municipal to be declared a depopulated area. It seems a bit complicated, but the uh, population decline rate should be the main factor. The pink municipals are already declared as a depopulated area, and yellow and purple areas are also considered depopulated. From the overall Japan map here, it's probably not a surprise that most of Hokkaido, Tohoku region, and Chukuk region, they are all considered to be depopulated. Since I live in Kyoto, let me just show you the detail of Kansai region. In general, Kansai region looks to be doing pretty well because Osaka, Kobe, Kyoto, they are all big cities which means the surrounding cities are usually bad towns for people to commute to the big cities for work. However, when I scroll down, the southern part of Nara and the entire Wakayama prefecture seems to be in serious condition. It's understandable since most of the area here are mountains and forests, but it's still pretty sad to think that many of the villages here might not exist in the next 10 or 20 years. So there we have the five areas that I think you should avoid in terms of safety when you want to buy old houses in Japan. And lastly, I just want to show you how all these five maps overlap together. What other areas that could be the best in terms of avoiding all these natural disasters, safe against mega threat earthquakes, they're far away from the volcanoes, far away from the nuclear plants, and the areas they are not. Uh, depopulated. Let's take a look. Here is the map of Japan. I'm using the previous depopulation map as the base. First, I mark in the coast with high chance of getting hit by the tsunami from Nankai Mega Earthquake. Then here I'm adding the current nuclear plants around Japan. And then here is the ring of fire with active volcanoes. So to me, it seems like the cities, they are relatively safe against all these disasters while not being in the depopulation area would be first, the Kanazawa and Toyama city and then second, the Kansai region including Osaka, Kyoto, Shiga and Hyogo prefecture. If you use the flooding and landslide hazard map to further filter out the areas in these cities, I'm sure you can find an old house that you can feel relatively safe to live in. Thanks for watching this long episode. I just want to say again that Japan is the land of natural disasters. So there is no guarantee that you can be 100% safe. You can ignore everything I said in this video, but at the very least, check the hazard maps. Bye bye.